and uh, welcome. Thank you for joining this uh, webinar today. I am Stéphane Lacrampe. I work for OBO Canada and I will be your moderator today. It is my pleasure to welcome and introduce our today's speaker, Julia Herdias. So Julia Herdias is an aerospace engineering undergraduate student at the Federal University of Santa Maria in Brazil and a member of the NanoSat CBR, a CubeSat development program. I wanted to add that uh, uh, Julia was introduced to systems engineering and MBSC in the middle of last year, so she is rather new to all these concepts. And part of today's topic is about illustrating how Capella and Arcadia can be used to learn these concepts by students. Our community is also growing on the teaching aspects, so it is very nice that we uh, can illustrate this um, very important topic in our webinars. And I'm very happy and grateful that Jura accepted to share her experience with her today, with us today, sorry. Um, and also, I wanted to very quickly introduce uh, Professor Eduardo Berger, which is here with us and that may participate uh, in the Q&A session. And without further ado, I'm going to hand over the presentation to you, Julia. Okay, Julia, the virtual floor is yours. And good afternoon, everybody. I'm Julia, a third semester aerospace engineering undergraduate student at the Federal University of Santa Maria. And I'm currently working on the nanosatellite uh, nano CBR pro project as a scientific initiation student funded by CNPq. My advisors are Nelson Shuk, a CEO researcher from the Southern Space Research Coordination Santa Maria, Brazil and Eduardo Puga, um, an adjunct professor at my university. I'll be presenting for you today my initial results regarding the use of model based system engineering at the at NanoSat CBR3 conceptual design. First, I'll integrate you at the NanoSat CBR program, then the objectives of my scientific initiation research, as well as a brief overview about model based system engineering and Capella Acadia, following with my work produced using the Capella software so far and a preliminary mission concept. At the end, a discussion and my final conclusions. The NanoSat CBR program created in 2006 by Nelson Shuki has a desire to develop capacity building and perform scientific research. Currently, there are two nanosatellites in operation the NanoSat CBR1 and NanoSat CBR2. The first one, NanoSat CBR1, is an academic, scientific, and technologic mission with the objective to gather data of Earth's, Earth's magnetic field with a magnetometer and its survivability in space environment. It is still in orbit for more than six years. It was in operation since 2014. NanoSat CBR2 is a two-unit CubeSat aimed to analyze the dynamic of the Earth ionosphere with a Langmuir probe and the verification of first Brazilian attitude determination system. And now we're working on our third nanosatellite of the program. The NanoSat CBR3 is a conceptual it's in its conceptual phase of development, this being the first phase of the life cycle. Its objective is to study space radiation, technology validation, and capacity building development. Unlike the previous missions, the NanoSat CBR3 has a constraint. This is to reuse and adapt the NanoSat CBR1 engineering module, a full one unit platform to a model flight model. By having this constraint, time and production cost will reduce significantly. 
Today, it has four main stakeholders, but st since it's still in its beginning, stakeholder analysis hasn't been complete yet. They are the National Space Research Institution, NP scientists, Research Institution, INATAL, CRN technologists, University, the Federal University of Cuba de Sul, and the Federal University of Santa Maria. NP scientists need to validate an, an innovative space radiation protective material, a biomimic material resistant to space radiation and the debris that has a great potential to be used in future um, Brazilian space missions. The CRN technologies need to validate their in-house development transceiver in space environment that collects and distributes Brazilian informational data. This aims to replace the current environment data collector satellites, SCD-1 and SCD-2. And the system use, uses the data collector platform of PCDs Uh, that are located all over the country, collecting temperature, humidity, and other um, parameters necessary for meteorological analysis for Brazil. The university's technicians and professors need to validate their in-house development integrated circuits against space radiation. These chips have hardware protection and software protection. Um, after the val validation of them, um, they can be used and they're probably going to be used for bigger satellites. UFSM also wants to develop capacity building in the space sector. And the best way that it is that is, is seen to measure is the student public with is with student publications. But what is MBSE, anyways? And why no? Why did we want to use MBSE? Um, many with many stakeholders are aren't specialists in space sector, meaning they might not understand all the technical means shown in tax in tax documents. As for with M MBSE, with models can be very helpful to illustrate them. What's happening? As many people are working in this project, a lot of documents can can cause problems as many versions can, are made and not everybody is on the same page as well as I can be in, with one version of the document, you can be with another one and well, that's a whole mess. And past missions show, shown us difficulty to measure manage these different stakeholders needs throughout the progress. This standard into operational uh, phase. That means it took a long, it took way too long to notice that some um, some really needed um, stakeholder needs uh, was wasn't shown since the beginning and that could interfere with the development phase and, and everything. It also helps with the interface requirement management. Words can be ambiguous, uh, but model isn't. So with, with not, when not using documents, it, it kind of just helps not be ambiguous. That means um, different people won't understand, like it's going to understand the same thing, it's not going to be different. Um, the project is is mainly still document centric, though. Um, but this is going to this work is going to be the first step for a transition to model centric. And last but not least, one of the most important reasons to use MBSE in our program is for educational pro purposes. The objective of my research is to learn, since this is my first contact with MBSE and system engineering. 
and also to and also use the modal based system engineering software with an embedded system engineering method to devel develop a mission concept as well as to produce future publication with this topic but what is um modal based uh, model based system engineering as inco says it's a formalized application with a modeling support system requirement design analysis verification and validation activity beginning in the conceptual design phases and continuing throughout the development and later life cycle phases its goal is to integrate information communication and the analysis of system engineering products. This approach enables a more accurate control of system engineering activities and project involving information exchange. It lowers development risk, improves quality, and uh, the ability to transfer for knowledge. This is extremely helpful, especially during the pandemic, since we're not seeing people face to face. It could mean if um, knowledge transferability is lost. Model base is modeling is, is based in three pillars. This meaning tool, language, and method. The tool is usually a software will will be used to de develop the this work. Language is similar to a program programming language that we use day to day, and method um, is sometimes conveniently embedded in this tool. This application was chosen as seen as previous missions such as NanoSat CBR2, that because of its large number of stakeholders, it was difficult to imagine, manage its needs. The software in use is the Capella software, a modeling tool that delivers a macro view to, engine, to the engineering team. Within, there is the Arcadia method embedded. That is a system engineering method based on the use of model with a focus on the collaborative definition, evolution, and the exploitation of its act architecture. First layer is the operational analysis. The second one is the functional and non-functional needs. Following with the logical architecture and ending with the physical architecture. At the moment, um, we are in the two first phases. And it has accomplished the first interaction. And, and we're now in the second one. Being this is an interactive, interactive system, it can occur many changes in the future as we can constantly maintain in contact with stakeholders, making them very active in this project. But how is being used this design to concept the, the to design a concept to NanoSat CBR3? This initial phase start with gathering information of, of information with different, different stakeholders for several different missions and payload. The objective of this work is to select a different mission requirement, a set of different mix, missions requirements that will compose a NanoSat CBR3 that will be built from an engineering model. After gathering those information, um, they are embodied at the software and then shown to them. All of these interactions are being held virtually, meaning many misinterpretations can be made. For this, Capella can be very use a very useful tool to ease this problem. This loop can be made many times till all parts are content and the mission requirements are established. However, there is a constraint predetermined. 
that must be acknowledged before the creation of the missing concept. In this case, it was made a preliminary concept, a mission concept, since the first part hasn't been established yet. And now I'll show you how the models de developed look like. The Nanosat CBR3 concept design start with the first layer, layer of Acadia being the operational capability, which states the needs, at the top being um, capacity building development, material design validation, um, transceiver validation, and, and chips validation. The operational entities, remembering that the, PC, the PCDs are data collection platform in the ground and important place and, and these are the important places. And the stakeholders that are NP, um, CRN and FRN and the universities. Then there is the operational activities integration. This one is divided in two parts. The development data and that is mainly seeking for capacity building development, starting with the CRN, um, the Nanosat CBR3 concept and completing with the student concept. Publication, no, student publications, I'm sorry. Um, and in-flight data, which adds payload data, the mission accomplishment measured by validation its mission. Uh, to validate transceiver, transceivers, it begins in collecting environmental data that transfers to co collect Nanosat CBR3 data and data filtration as to validate transceivers. The same happened to validate chips and validate materials. They, but they start at the collect nanosat CBR3 data, then they go to filtration and validate chips. Same happening with validate materials. Well, well yeah. Um, in the in flight, there also has the um, platform data that contributes with the development, the building development, the capacity building development as well. And it starts with collecting unset CBR, three data, elaborate, and then student publications. To, to complete this, um, we have an operational architecture that is the most complete module. Assembling the first two modules shown before, and informing the capacity building that is going to be the focus of this work. This is the collect that collect nanosat CBR3 data. As is the only one being developed. The other ones they already been developed, and we're just going to use them. Completing the operational analysis phase. This is the first layer. Now for the second. As you represent the functional and non-functional needs, the, consolid the consolidation of requirements, it structured the system architecture that displayed system boundaries, function, and the relationship. After the nanoset, see BR3 CubeSat is the de deployment by a pod, the power subsystem, subsystem is turned on, and after some minutes, the antennas are deployed. The energy shall be stored and used to feed, feed the platform and payloads. And, and to start gathering data from them. This data is going to be sent to the program ground station. After that, the data shall be sent to the Nanosat CBR 318 who will analyze the data platform on the, uh, the, yeah, 
and development data to produce publications as previously explained. As well as um, they're going to filtrate the, the data and send to its respective stakeholders. And now a preliminary nanosat mission concept was as shown. Was this is an overlook and a very simplified way to show the mission Regar regarding that this is the beginning and many details haven't been developed yet. As for now, this is what proposed. We first launch, after it's been launched, it's going to be the point. And as an operational, they will use telemetry and telecommand with the ground station and transfer data. Um, after that, we'll collect the NanoSat CBR team will have um, those data and will pass to stakeholders. As for the discussions, the main goal of this preliminary results from the research is seen as successful. As the objective of the second loop is refining some elements from the first, some of our main of the main contributions acquiring by using MPSE are the introduction of system engineering education to students, as we can see two of them working on the modules on the module system boundaries and basic functions. Um, it's good to um, visualize and understand the system proposed and approximate the stakeholders to the project. It's traceability and that phrase is reliability is really, it's a really main contribution. It also reduced paperwork, such as this one. Although the models are being made in this project, it's far from being model centric. The mission requirements are still being documented. Another contribution of MPSA is with mission definition review that's happening later this year. Not all, uh, all, all people in the room are going to be aerospace engineer, meaning they might not understand everything that is written. Um, using models is going to be much easier for them to comprehend what is actually happening. As for the conclusion, it was shown throughout the presentation how the uses of MBSE and the conceptual phase can, be, can make a more structured base for the mission as well for educational purposes. Being this my first contact with MBSE and engine in system engineering. Also, it consolidates and unify understanding. And ease the process of requirement validation. For future works, there will be new interviews with different stakeholders, possibly different missions, further modeling through layers, and we are going to model in the physical layer the engineering model to consolidate with nanosatellite platform that we already have with the mission that we are proposing. This will also bring the adaptation and the upgrades for our engineering model shall have to become a flight model. And finalize, to finalize the mission requirements documents. I would like to thank my advisors, my university, for the support opportunity, as well as the Brazilian Space Agency for helping and granting for this project, um, NP, and uh, the National Council for 
scientific and technology development for um for funding and helping us students to develop this project thank you everybody for your attention any questions please ask my contacts contacts are here and that's it Thank you very much, uh, Julia, for, for this presentation. So it's now a time for the question and answers. Uh, we, we already have a couple of them uh, in the Q&A window. So just a reminder, if you want to ask questions, do not hesitate to enter them in the Q&A uh, window. You should have a, a button if it's not yet open in the WebEx interface. So first question, uh, uh, my, my connection dropped out a few times, so I may have missed this, but is the ground segment of the mission also developed using MBSC? I'm sorry, what? Yeah, so I, I'm, I'm going to shorten the, the question. Uh, the, the question is uh, on, on the ground segment. So uh, I guess uh, the segment which is collecting the data on the ground, uh, is this part of the mission also developed using MBSE? No, the ground statement is the same multi-mission ground station since the first nanosite CBR1. But we think to model the ground station to upgrade it to the S-band. Um, and, and, and I guess maybe the, the question would be when, when this segment was developed and was it developed using MBSC? But I don't know if you have the answer on this one. Um, I don't. I'm sorry. But I can see that and answer you by email. Yeah, no worries. Uh, yeah, and, and Eduardo, if you, uh, you know, if you want to uh, answer some of the questions, please do not hesitate to un unmute uh, yourself. Right. So um, the next question is, how did Capella exactly helped with traceability? Uh, if I understood correctly, this was uh, documented separately. So that's, that's the question. How did Capella exactly help with traceability? Well, um, since they're all connected with, as shown, I, I, I don't know if I can come back and show, like from previous, previous um, slides. Can, can I? Yeah, yes, you, yes, you can, you can. Oh, okay, I'll, I'll show you. Um, as you can see here, um, they're connected with, they're all interconnected, meaning we can trace everything back to the start, like here. They're connected, and they're also connected here and here. That's why there is the traceability. Okay. Hope okay. that answered. Um. The next question I have is, uh, what are the main difficulties that you had uh, learning MBSC? And maybe I can add uh, to this question uh, that it, it, it's maybe it's not only about learning MBSC, but also learning systems engineering. Uh, so. Yeah, I guess the question is, what are the main difficulties you had in learning MBSC and how MBSC is helping you to learn systems engineering as well? I can say that a learning curve of Capella modeling was fast. Um, we, I also have, uh, we have, uh, as UFSCM have an introductory course of Capella in Portuguese made by students, which helped me with that. Um, the diffi difficulty is to consolidate several stakeholders and to learn all system engineering concept, which they all new to me. And what did you ask again? Uh, um, 
So how 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 did Capella? Uh, no, what 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 are the main difficulties you had learning MBSC, and how MBSC helped you maybe to better learn system engineering? That was a kind of two questions. Okay, that I, I just answered that, and yeah, that, that is that's that's that. It was really helpful since we also is also we can see it, and we can see everything that's all those the steps and that's really good because it illustrate to me what is what it is actually all the phases that is really helpful really good nice okay thank you um just a quick message message to julien moran uh you you typed looks like you try to type a question on the q a but i just have a a word which which is challenges, uh, so I'm, I'm not sure what uh, if, if maybe you missed the question. Uh, next question: How did you learn to work with Capella and understand the Acadia method? Um, as as I said, I used several tutorials with YouTube and some books and um, thesis that used Capella. And that all helped a lot, and especially the the course my colleagues did, student the students did. That's how okay. I learned. Um, next question is: Was Capella modeling used in project verification and validation activities, such as requirements reviews? creation of functional tests or interfa interface control documents? Yes, but not ver verification, it didn't happen yet. We intend to use it for AIT. So I, I guess you used it for requirements review though? Yes. Yes. Um, we've got uh, Luis uh, who is asking to return back to, to slide 10, uh, where we have the relationships between stakeholders, needs, and ideas. 10. Um, Is this one? I guess so, but uh, let me see if there is a question behind that. I don't see a question. Um, so we, we'll see if a question pops up on this. We can stay on this slide. Uh, and the next okay. question, uh, I, I think you, you answered it already. Uh, it is, uh, is Capella easy to learn? Oh, yes, it's very easy. Um, it's very um, dy dynamic and you can see many, we have many tutorials like in here in, in Capella, you can see and see them using it. It's an intuitive interface as well. So it's very easy. Okay, thank you. I've got another question. Um, are the different layers uh, uh, as well connected or only each diagram? I'm not sure I understand the question. Um, maybe you can go back to the slide where you introduced uh, Arcadia. Uh, and, I and I can try to answer this one, maybe. I, I understood the question. I, I can answer oh, Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, um, yeah. Yes, it's only one model. The diagram are different models views. But it's all the same model. So this is is all together. So I hope that answered. Yeah, another I guess another way to put it is um, the diagrams are just views on the model, mm -hmm. but the underlying models are are linked together and that's why yeah you see on these slides uh so we have the operational analysis that's one layer the functional analysis but there is traceability 
between the layers and that's what you see as uh, the red uh, uh, lines, the red arrows uh, between the different layers here. Um, next question, uh, are you using a specific tool for requirements management? How are you capturing and or modeling stakeholder requirements in general? I'm sorry, can you repeat the question? So, so there are two questions and I'm going to ask the first one. Are you using a specific tool for requirements management? Not yet but we intend to use it as soon as possible. So I guess you, you are using maybe Word or Excel to, to gather, uh, to manage your textual requirements? Yes, we use Word. Right. Um, and, and then the, the second part of the question was, how are you capturing and or modeling stakeholder requirements in general? with the two first layers of Capella. Okay, so you are, you are mainly using the, the models uh, yes. to, to, to capture the stakeholder requirements, yeah. Um, These two. So, the, <laughs> I have the question from Julien Moral now, and the question is, is it planned to pursue the MBSC approach in the next phases of the project? Um, yes. Yes, and, and, and the, the questions that comes after that is, uh, what will be the next challenges then? I don't know the, set, the next challenges yet. But yes, the idea is to use MBSC in all phases. Thank you. Um, so next question is, uh, I saw several interfaces in the model. Can you talk about how Capella helped with the, the interface definitions? Um. I'm going to ask Eduardo to answer that one, if he can, please. Hi, everyone. Uh, Julia, I think you can go back. Uh, actually, no, some, I think, three slides forward, then you can show the, the interfaces and how you got them. Yes, with this, this uh, is the correct. Slide. So the question is, uh, can you please repeat, uh, Stefan? Yes. Um, I saw several interfaces in the model, and maybe, yeah, maybe this one, this slide, or maybe the one at the system analysis level. Uh, but but anyway, uh, can you talk about how Capella helped with the interface definition? So, uh, given that uh, every element in Capella represents some function or some uh, action or some system or some component, uh, these interfaces are bringing uh, up to life. So we can see in the model view uh, all uh, all interfaces that we have in the in the system, as we can see here. In the operational architecture, we can see several different uh, interfaces uh, between operational activities. So uh, these are uh, interfaces that we are going to uh, detail uh, in the next phases. So this is the way that we uh, this is the way that we uh, define our interfaces in different layers of Capella. Okay, I, I can add uh, something on this one. Maybe uh, could you go to maybe the next slide, Julia, please? 
Yes, so, so this one is another architecture diagram at the system analysis level and the big uh, blue box, the NCBR, NCBR3 is the system of interest. So at this uh, layer in Arcadia, you are modeling the system of interest as a, a black box. So you are really defining um, the, the, the boundaries of the system and, and then it interfaces with the external actors and, and components. So in this diagram, and that's the same as what Eduardo was saying, you, you can then see in green the functions and the links between the different functions are the, the functional exchanges. So these functional exchanges are uh, uh, having uh, data uh, which are allocated on them. So you, you can define the, 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 the data or the flow in general uh, of information of, of, or of other things that are uh, carried out between one exchange and another exchange. And then this is not represented in this diagram, but you can also define component ports, so ports to the blue boxes, and allocate the functional exchanges to the component exchanges. So that's how uh, you're going to then manage your interfaces with, uh, with Capella, and we have a, a whole chapter on the documentation on how, how to manage interfaces uh, with, with Capella uh, yeah, in, the, in the embedded documentation of Capella. Right, let me see the next question. Um, that may be a similar question to what uh, was already answered, but this is, uh, I'm going to read the question. Hi, I'm Luis from Costa Rica. Uh, what was your experience, experience in using Capella and Arcadia method for your project? What is very difficult or easy? Uh, what do you think about the tools? Hi, Luis. Um, it was very enjoyable, my experience with Capella. I really liked the platform. Um, they were easy to learn and easy to use. And I, I think it's very good, like visually pretty, I can say that. Um, what else can I say? That That was a lot of points on this question. Can you repeat it for me? Yeah, no worries. Um, so first part of the question, uh, so, so I mean, the general question was, what was what your experience in using Capella and Arcadia? And then was it difficult or easy? So I guess you, you answer this one. And, and uh, what do you think about the tool? The modeling was very easy. It was easy to learn, but it wasn't as easy to model it. Um, it's starting to be difficult with learning some concept engineering, system engineering, and also the Arcada method, but it's, it's going. Um, it has some different names and some engineering and system engineering. So that can, could be a little confusing, but they're all the same. So that's something that's kind of tricky, but I guess that's mainly it. Hope that yeah. answered. Yeah. Yeah, thank you, Julia. And I've got another question from uh, Luis. Um, do you consider Capella and Arcadia method important to incorporate into university engineering programs? Yes. I think they're very important since we can use this on our, how can I say this? When we're working on future projects, this can be very useful. So yes. It's good Excuse for me. us students to learn. Excuse me, Sorry. Julia and Stefan, if I may mm -hmm. add something. 
to this cool. question. Uh, just as an example, we have here in our university, we are now adding uh, Capella and Arcadia method to, into two different courses of our program, right? One is the systems engineering fundamentals and the other is space systems uh, concept design. So in both these courses, we are now using Capella and we hope uh, to have great results regarding uh, syst uh, systems engineering teaching and also MBSE teaching. So can, can you uh, can you elaborate just a little bit on the rationale behind, uh, you know, deciding to incorporate uh, Arcadia and Capella in those two courses? So, sorry, I didn't hear the first the first part of your question. Yes, yeah, so, sorry, Eduardo. Uh, can you uh, tell us a little bit more why? Uh, you decided to incorporate uh, Arcadia and Capella in these two courses? Oh, sure. Uh, the fact is that we already tried uh, different other uh, tools and the, the Capella tool was presented to us by ITA, you know, the, the, the Technological Aeronautics Institution in Brazil uh, by Professor Christopher and then we compared uh, Capella with some other uh, tools that we had that time and then we concluded that Capella by being open source mainly and to have that great um, um, that great forum that everyone contributes and different add-ons uh, we thought that it's the best uh, the best way to teach uh, systems engineering in MBSE, or not the best, but a, a very good one. Thank you, Eduardo. Um, next question is uh, an interesting one and a different one. Uh, it is how do you work uh, with sessions of brainstorm of the project and Capella together? Or maybe if I can rephrase it, how do you incorporate Capella when you are in brainstorming session in the project? Or maybe brainstorming with the st stakeholders, things like that. Um, oops, I, I'll show the, the other slide. Um, when we're in this phase, we're just talking and noting what their needs are. So we only operate with Capella after. And I'll show them what I did and they'll tell me if it's good, if, if it is what they want. So that's, that's the kind of loop we do. And since we're in a pandemic, we are only doing this via different platforms like Meet, Zoom, and that's how we're doing. I, I think, I hope that answered. Yes, yeah, so if I understand you correctly, at the beginning, the first time you just discussed with them, yes. and then you, you worked on the first uh, Capella model, and then you started to have a discussion with them by showing the models on Capella, and then uh, uh, discussing about the models are okay or are not okay on Capella. Yes, if they need so if they probably missed um, some needs, if if there is more things to add or things that doesn't need, I think that's the type of conversation. We're still not done with this yet, but we're doing it. So it's really in the beginning of this process. So we're we just did like one and then going to show them that that's how the interaction is going to be and is being made. Yeah. So I guess um, one question would be the first time you showed them your Capella models, how, how easy was it for them to understand it? Did you have to explain how Arcadia and Capella works or was it 
quite straightforward for them to understand the models they were seeing. And the first time this happened, it wasn't um, me doing it. It was another student. So I can't really answer that. But I think uh -huh. Eduardo can. Answering the question, uh, we can say that the difficulty was with the different names uh, because the stakeholders, which ha already have some systems engineering knowledge, they are used to a different uh, nomenclature, different names. I mean, when we when we work with Capella or Arcadia, we are dealing with let's say operational activities and functional diagrams and uh, different name different names uh, than. Uh, systems engineering uh, are usually dealing with. So this is, I think this is the main, uh, it's not a problem, but something to overcome in the beginning of uh, our sessions between stakeholders and, and our team. But the diagrams, the model views are very easy to understand and help it a lot to explain what the stakeholders really want to. So this phase is um, really, really nice to put uh, in the in a, just one diagram everything that the stakeholders uh, want to want to have. Thank you very much, Eduardo. And uh, I have one uh, one last question. And I may be able to answer it if you can't, uh, which is how do we represent the requirements in Capella? Can you answer it for me? <laughs> yeah, no problem. Since you said you could. <laughs> so, so there are, there are, first of all, there is a, an add on to Capella, which is a free and open source one, which is called the requirements viewpoint. And uh, if you install it uh, in Capella, you will be able to create requirements, uh, textual requirements, and uh, display them in any diagram and link them with any model element in diagrams. Um, and, and I would uh, answer, answer the question a little bit differently as well. Um, we there have been, there has been quite a few talk about this topic. How do you uh, manage requirements and, and models and uh, um the, the so, some uh, some of the results was that you know model elements can be considered as requirements as well uh and and i would uh, say that uh, you you may have want to have a look at uh, one of the papers that was written uh and uh, for for the incosi Symposium uh, International Conference on 2019, and which which won the best MBSC best MBSC paper award, and and which which was about uh, reconciliating uh, textual requirements and and models, uh, and yeah, this paper and the content has been presented in in quite a few webinars, um, mainly by by Thales. Uh, this paper was written by Thales. Um, yeah, so that's quite a lot of uh, content on, on, on this. Okay, um, we, we are uh, running a little bit uh, out of time. Uh, can you move to the last slide, uh, please, uh, Julia? Yes, oops. So yeah, thank you very much, Julia, for a great presentation, uh, and and and, uh, and thank you very much to the audience for all your questions and and your time. Um, before closing this session, I just want to announce that uh, our next webinar will be on the first of July, uh, probably around the same time as today, and we will have to uh, the pleasure to to have uh, Danilo. Palamin de Almeida from uh, Andrew Rosat in Brazil again, uh, presenting another case study he realized during his uh, master thesis and demonstrating an uh, application of using Capella Arcadia to model an initial mission architecture and concept of operation for a CubeSat mission. And he would demonstrate as well uh, a Capella plugin 
he developed, uh, which is called uh, Capella to four plan, which automatically transforms uh, mission models into a configuration script for the uh, NP four plan satellite simulator. Uh, which, which, uh, and this uh, transformation configures a simulator with uh, the model mission parameters, uh, allowing the user to run operation scenario simulations and uh, and to use the results for uh, power, power and and data, or budget analysis and trade studies. Um, yeah, it's going to be uh, another great webinar in uh, in a few weeks, and I also wanted. Uh, to inform you about the up upcoming ESA, uh, so European Space Agency MBSC workshop, uh, the, the 2021 workshop that will happen on the 29th and 30th of September. And the call for paper is open, uh, so do not hesitate to submit uh, your Capella uh, space case studies uh, for this great conference. I also put on this slide some great links, uh, the Capella YouTube channel, the Capella adopter page, uh, where you can submit your organization organization logos for, for supporting the Capella community. And if you have uh, ideas or topics uh, that you would like to present uh, in this Capella webinar series, uh, please do not hesitate to contact us. And without further ado, uh, thank you again uh, and goodbye.